welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the tutorial for this U-fold pop-up card that I've designed to look like a horse stable. It fits into a 5x7 envelope so there's no worries about mailing it or sending it off to somebody and it's just super cute with all of the little added details. We've got the beams along the top, the saddle, the riding boots, the front doors, the horse, a little bit of rope, the pitchfork and everything and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I made everything or how I attached everything all together to create this U-fold card or a bench style card. It's a little bit of an adapted bench style card. In order to make this card, we're going to need a plain old glue stick, a pair of scissors, some stronger glue to hold on some of the pop-up elements, a small fine razor blade, and this is the backing of the card. It's scored and folded already. The measurements will be down in the description if you're interested. And this is going to create the backing. And these are all my little pieces for the little elements. Everything I have here was cut out and created on my Cricut Design Space. So today I'm just gonna get started by adding on all of my elements, or adding together all of my elements here. So I've made a lot of little elements that go onto this card. And one thing I do really love about this card is because it's a 3D card, it gives you a lot to kind of look at and it just makes it seem that much more intricate and realistic and exciting if you've got a bunch of little things to look at. By no means do you need to make your card this intricate, but I like it. So I've got the front doors here assembled. This upside down U shape here is gonna actually be the back of the barn. Now I am gluing together pieces for the horse that's gonna go inside. One thing I do really like about creating my own images in Cricut Design Space or for Cricut Design Space is that you can add in all of these little pieces of shading which I think give the elements a lot more dimension and just bring a lot more interest to the image itself. Whereas having just a flat horse looks nice but I think this just looks just a little bit nicer here. And you'll notice here I do have that lighter patch where the eye is going to go. I haven't drawn on the eye. I could have used the Cricut to do that, but I wanted to get it precise, so I wanted to just do it by hand. So I'm going to set those aside and keep moving on and assembling more of the little pieces here. And anytime I do cut anything out on my Cricut, I do like to cut it all out at once and then stick it all into one little box and it's kind of saved by project that way. And then when I have time or I have a minute to film or make a card, all of the pieces and everything I need are ready to go. So these are gonna be the additional uh, stable doors. I didn't want to make all of the stable doors the same color. I like having the other ones red. Originally I was gonna make them brown, but I wanted a little bit of contrast. So you see here I've got a saddle that I'm just assembling and I actually have two sets for the saddle. So what I want to do is have it actually draping over the stable doors and by no means do you need to, but I wanted to have both sides there so it does actually look like it's draping over the door. It would look just fine just having one glue to the front, but what I'm going to do is replicate the exact same thing in the mirror image and then glue the tops together, leaving the bottom open. And then when it's dry and I'm ready to assemble everything, I can actually slip it right over the door and it just adds a little touch of intricacy to it that I just love. And I really like to make the intricate pieces of the card. Some people don't, that's fine. It looks great either way. So I'm popping on some glue at the top here and I'm going a little bit fast here, but there we go, just gluing it together and the bottom is still open so I can slip it over the door whenever I need to. So some of my other design elements here, I've got some piles of straw or hay and I've got these little tiny teeny riding boots. That's another thing I love about the Cricut is just how small it will cut out these pieces. Like look at how small these little accent pieces are. And the boots look just fine without it but it just looks so much better with those little pieces added on. So I couldn't help myself but to create those little pieces and stick them on. It's a little bit more tedious to make the card, but once you get going, all of the pieces fit together perfectly and it's pretty easy to assemble. So I'm just gonna get these boots done. And I always like to have all of the elements assembled before I actually start making the base of the card. And then it just gives me a better idea of what I've got and how things are going. So I've also got a few little gardening tools or barn tools, I guess you could call them. And I've got a shovel and a pitchfork here. So the shovel, I did the same way I did the pitchfork using a black cardstock, 
but then I actually glued it face down onto a piece of tinfoil and used that small knife there you see to cut around the tinfoil. I could have used the tinfoil on the Cricut machine, but I find it tends to rip pretty easily and I was concerned that with such a small item it would rip. And it was pretty easy just to cut it out simply myself. So I did that and I actually scored it down the middle and folded it a little bit so it's a little bit more three dimensional. So now I'm going to put together the pitchfork and now I've got a pitchfork and a shovel all set for my barn. So now I've got everything done for the elements and I'm going to quickly draw up a little background for behind the barn. So this is meant to be the door frame on the other end of the alley. So I'm just going to quickly use my favorite Castell watercolor pencils to color in a landscape drawing to fit inside of that window. I'm just using a piece of scrap paper. You can see I've got some embossing on the edge and some other little Cricut cutouts. I like to use these little scraps up and that's another reason why I didn't just cut this out on the Cricut. I just cut it out by hand because it was super simple and I was able to use something just from my scrap stash. And so I'm going to pop some glue around the edge of this one and this is essentially the first part of the card that I'm actually assembling now that I've got all of the little elements done and I noticed I didn't quite color all the way right to the edge as I properly should have. So I'm going to have to bring out those pencils again and give it another quick color and my cutting was just slightly off so I'm just cutting that down and you do want to make sure because this is going to be going at the back between two folds that it does fit in there perfectly and doesn't interfere with the fold so that's why I did trim it down so now we're all done we've got that all set clear a little space here and we're going to get to assembling this card so very back middle piece here just going to pop some regular glue stick onto it glue it down right in the middle again Make sure that you're avoiding those score lines. We want to make sure that the card can fold in and out easily and doesn't get caught up. And I'm just going to fold along the lines just to make sure that crease is nice and sharp with that card stuck in there. The card stuck does make this card a little bit thicker so the creases aren't quite as sharp. However, they do still work the way they are intended to. And I've got some beams here as these stall separators. So I'm going to glue those on. And I did these in a two-tone brown color just because I wanted to have that little bit of a an air of three dimension to it and these ones you'll see I'm not gluing them right up against that back wall piece I'm actually gluing them out a little bit because I don't want them jamming up in that creased score line so there is a little bit of a gap but once the card is propped up and displayed you'll never actually see it unless you're really looking for it so if you're picky about that kind of stuff you can put it a little bit closer but you might have a little bit more trouble doing the folding. And you'll actually see, I actually glued on the wrong beam piece here. Um, so I'm gonna switch that out, glue on the longer one. And these ones I'm putting on the outside of the crease. So when I've got that second piece of brown, it actually looks like a post. There will be a little gap in between again where that crease is, but unless you're really looking for it, you won't see it. But I really like the way that this one looks. It actually makes the card stand out like there's an actual beam there. So I'm just replacing or repeating it on the other side here, getting the two pieces down. And you'll see I showed you in a little bit more detail here where that bit of gray does poke through. I could have used a brown cardstock at the backing, but I felt there was already a lot of brown on the card. So I wanted to have a little bit of a contrast. <clears throat> so I did three beams. I wasn't sure how they were going to all fit on the actual finished card. So I put on the two beams that I knew where the placement was. And I'm just eyeballing where to put this third beam. And it's also going to have a secondary lighter piece. And as you can see, it kind of is starting to come together. You can see how the beams are supposed to look like beams, or I think they look like beams at least. And it it's just starting to make the card look a lot more three-dimensional. It's already going to be three-dimensional because of the fold, but the way everything is laid out so far, the Cricut coloring, or the Cricut cut, cutting has made it look really good. I can't talk today. So I'm gonna add on this piece, this is essentially gonna be the front of the stall. And just adding that on, making sure it's good and stuck down and everything's even. Again, every time I'm adding something near those creases, I'm really being careful to make sure that I go back in and test the crease because I don't want it bulging up. Next, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put this horse. This is gonna be the front bridge portion of the card. So I want to make sure that it's kind of in line with somewhere that would be realistic for the horse. I don't want the whole horse covered up, but I don't want him cut off at the angles or the ankles. My gosh, I can't talk. 
So now because I do want the horse to pop out and be sort of a 3D element to the card, I'm just measuring a little piece here to use as a flap, I guess, to hold it on. Folding that in half, cutting it down so it fits nicely in my space. And again, because this is going to be a 3D item, I want it to glue down and stick really well. So I'm applying a lot of that glue stick and setting it aside to dry while I assemble the rest of the card. So I'm going to pop on the rest of the stalls are on this side, or the stall fronts. I'm not really sure what to call this piece. It's what holds the horses in, I guess. So there we go, testing the crease again, and making sure everything fits on. So now we're going to add on the front. And I'm going to start with one side, making sure to avoid where that fold is, because we don't want this getting caught up on the fold. To get a little bit past where it's supposed to be, just going to wipe that off and stick that on really well and kind of fold it back and forth once or twice to make sure that crease is nice and there we go. So we basically have the base of our card as well as the background done and I will add in here, if you are gonna add in any elements in the inside of where the barn is, I would add them in before you add that front piece on. I wasn't sure where I wanted to put anything so I took the risk and added them in after. It is a lot more difficult to place them in there. It can be done however so just a heads up in case you wanted to. So I'm gonna add these front doors on here and those kind of line up with those poles. Next I'm going to just make sure those creases are down good again and add on the front doors. And that little edge didn't want to stick down so I'm just keep pushing it on and glue stick to the back of this. It's getting pretty repetitive. I don't know how many times you need me to tell you. I'm um, putting glue on the back of something and sticking it onto the card more so I just wanted to show you where I stuck everything and how I stuck everything and what elements I used in the Cricut and I've got my big head in the way. My goodness. There we go. Okay, so and this corner is driving me crazy. So we're gonna glue that down. Perfect. So all the base elements are pretty much done and now we're gonna add in that horse. So what I want to do is glue him both to the wall and to those front door areas so that when the card opens, he pops open along with them and he's a bit more 3D. So I'm gonna use my liquid, clear liquid glue here just because I really want him to stick down and I do not want him going anywhere because he's an item or an element of the card that will be moving a lot. I wanna make sure that he doesn't go anywhere. So I'm gluing him to the wall first, sticking him down nice and good, and then I'm gonna glue in behind where he's stuck down to the door. There we go. And now you can see he's all dry stuck to the door and he doesn't go anywhere and he sticks up nicely. So now I'm just going to add in all of my other little elements. I'm going to add my saddle over the door here. As you can see, it slips over nicely because I did those two sides. I'm going to, I think, put my riding boots. I got a little spill of glue on the front of the card, so I'm going to use those to cover up my little glue mistake. This is why I like adding the elements at the end. I've always got some little mistake I need to hide and it's nice being able to do so with other elements you'd never even notice it. So in with all my beading stuff I have these actually cylinder wooden beads and little tiny round wooden beads and I kind of wanted to add these on as an extra element to the card to make it just that much more 3D and I decided to go with the cylinders on just the outside doors since where I have handles are kind of covered up on the other doors. I've also got a little roll of twine here that I thought I could hang on one of the beams in the barn just gonna shorten it a little bit and wrap it up. And it can hang there as twine. I'm sure it's used in a barn somewhere or as some other little barn element. So what I'm gonna do is kind of shape it. And I like this stuff because it is a little bit rigid. So it does shape quite nicely. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the top and just kind of twist it so that it, it stays kind of in the shape that I want it to stay in. And I'm gonna add a little clip on just to hold it while it kind of dries and I get other stuff assembled. So in order to add on these handles, I actually am going to need to flatten the card out. Again, I'm just organizing where I want all these little elements, trying to plan it out, what I want and where I want it to go and all that kind of stuff. And for these ones or anything that's a little bit heavier, I'm actually gonna use this clear liquid glue again. I also have some beams that I cut out for the top. Totally not necessary. The card looks great just as it is. But again, it just adds a little bit more realism, I think, to the card. So I'm just using a black pencil crayon, probably Crayola, 
and I'm just gonna draw a few little wood grains onto these. Had I known that I was gonna do this before or had I thought of drawing wood grain on before, I would have drawn it onto all of the beams before I attached them to the card. I did go in afterwards and attach them on or draw them on separately, but it's a little bit more difficult to do once everything glued on. So, and I'm gonna make these in the same way that I made the horse. I'm just going to fold a little corner, glue it down, let that dry, and then measure it out, fold the other corner, and glue it down to the other side so that when the card pops up, it will pop up with it. So I fold it down that little corner, sticking it right at the top of that back beam. And even if you did do beams, you probably only have to do the first one. It doesn't, it looks nice to have three, but you definitely don't need all three. You could just do that front one. The other ones are kind of hidden unless you tilt the card. So again, going in with some more wood patterning on these beams with my black Crayola pencil. And I don't know, I find just these little touches make the card just that much more special. It's one thing to get a card, but I like to give cards that kind of have something else to look at and that people can kind of display. And it's kind of like, oh, did you see, look, oh, there's a saddle in the back and there's a, that kind of thing. I like that there's a lot of little different elements to the card. Don't get me wrong, a simple card is gorgeous as well, but I find when I'm making a pop-up card like this, I just want to add in as many little details as I can. I do tend to go a little bit overboard though, so that's a habit of mine. So I'll glue the second beam on, and we're just gonna glue, glue, oh goodness, I really can't talk today. Glue this third beam on, and get that. And I'm just using a glue stick for this one. Since it's such thin pieces of paper, and they'll be a little bit more visible, I didn't want to use the liquid glue, because that stuff comes out really fast and I didn't want it to like buckle the paper or warp anything or drip glue everywhere. So I took my chances with the glue stick and it actually is holding up really well. I'm a big fan of glue sticks. Um, they're just a staple in my mind. So now I've glued down the other side. You can see here, I had to skip ahead. I think my son woke up while I was filming this so I had to go and get him settled. So I've got the three beams there along the top, you can see. And as you can see, really, you can't see the back two unless you tilt the card. So really, the front one was the only one that was really necessary. So now I'm going to flatten the card out. And that'll kind of help to keep those in place while they fully dry a little bit more. And I'm going to put something on top of it, something that's a little bit heavier. Because I don't want it popping up while I'm trying to glue these handles on. I don't want them rolling around and getting glue everywhere. So I'm going to use this clear liquid glue. This one I actually just got from Dollar Tree in a three pack. There was, I think, a fabric glue, a tacky glue, and this clear glue. I really do like this clear glue. It dries pretty quickly, but there's enough time in between drying and application that you get some wiggle room to move stuff around and adjust as you need. So I'm going to actually use this little round bead here and it's going to just act as a hook to hold our twine on. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I add the twine. And then I'm going to add some glue and pop on those handles here. Um, if you are mailing it, beads and stuff will make it a little bit um, bumpier and potentially heavier. Uh, this one's just going to be actually handed to the recipient, so I'm not too worried about getting damaged in the mail or anything like that. So now I've got my twine out of the little clip because it's all dried. And I'm going to apply a little bit of that clear glue and get my big fat head in the way again. And stick that twine right onto that makeshift bead hook. And it's in front of the horse's face right now, but once it's dry, I'm going to kind of have to go in and fix that. And I knock the bead off. So put those back and let that dry. So now I've left it for a little bit and I'm back and everything is pretty much added on. I added on a little jump ring to the bottom of the saddle here. I thought it acted as a nice little stirrup. I added in the pitchfork and the straw in the back 
we've got the twine on the side, the saddle, the boots, and again, that little jump ring that I wrapped into the bottom of the stirrup, and another little tinfoil piece co covered piece of cardstock as a horseshoe at the top of the card. As you can see, it still folds down nicely. It will fit in the card. And if you're writing a message on the card, you have the whole back space to write that. And there we go. Card is all done. It does fold both ways, but because I've got that bead there as the hook, I'm actually gonna be continuously folding it the other way when I go to put it into an envelope. As I said before, this will fit into a standard five by seven envelope, which is really nice. And I do actually still have the shovel that I couldn't find anywhere to put it. I didn't want to put it behind the horse because I thought it would be covered up. And we already had the pitchfork back there and I thought in the front was a little bit too busy. So I'm just gonna leave it to the side and if I decide to make another one, then I'll use it then. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you're looking for any of the measurements or extra details on anything I've done today, the information should be all in my blog post, which will be linked down in the description. Basic measurements for this card will also be down in the description, as well as any other materials I used. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.